while you're turning, I want to say uh, we, we do appreciate all of you that are visiting with us. We have several visitors here with us today. I don't know of you, but you're more than welcome to be here. Uh, this young lady that was right here and, and then some others uh, that, uh, that we see from here and there. And Miss Cook, I just met her a while ago. That's Roberts, the man that's been doing all this work on our buses. That's his wife and all these kids back there. So we're glad that y'all are here this morning. Make yourself at home. And then others that are here. If, if, I, if I miss somebody, I mean to. I know we got a lot of folks here today uh, that we need to uh, recognize, but um, the Lord knows you're here, and I appreciate you being here. Now, I want you to look in Hebrews 10. It's a very familiar verse. 25, and I'm going to preach this morning on what causes people to drop out of church. If you go out and talk to 500 people in this part of the country, 300 of them will tell you I used to go to church, but not more. I, I want us to look at that this morning. What causes people to drop out of church? Hebrews 10, 25 said that we are not to forsake Notice how it words that. If you can't help it, you can't help it. Forsaken is different than can't help it. The assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. That's what we do at church. Even so much the more as we see the day approaching. Now, I've been pastoring church for a long time now, and it's always constantly somebody is dropping out. Somebody's falling by the wayside. People say, where's so-and-so? I had not seen them in a few weeks. And then they'll pop up. You say, okay, everything's all right. And then again, where's so-and-so? I had not seen them in a while. And then they'll pop back in, and then they're gone. I go preach revivals. Many of the places I go preach, I've been preaching 10, 12, 15 years in a row. And when you go to a church that many times, you start to, you learn people, their faces. And I'll go back, after I've been somewhere 10 years, say, where's so-and-so? The preacher will shake his head and say, brother, he got out. This happened. That happened. Something else happened. They got out of church. And I've seen so many come in like a, a wild Indian going to save the world and set the spiritual woods on fire. And now are nowhere to be found. I've seen many uh, that were solid for years. And I'll be honest with you, one of the hardest parts of my job, and there's some hard parts to this, but one of the hardest parts to my job is getting over the hurt and the disappointment of people just quitting church. It's awful. You never get used to that pain. You never, no matter how many people you got, if one, Falls out. If you're a real preacher, it'll hurt you. Now, this morning, it is a scriptural, sensible, reasonable, common sense fact that God wants his children to gather together and have a time and a place to meet and worship. If you got any spiritual sense about you at all, you would not argue with that statement. All through the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, God had a time, a place, and a, a reason for meeting together for the purpose of preaching, praying, and worshiping Him. I want to break this down this morning. I won't cover every single one, but every single one will fall into one of these categories. And this is on my heart, so you listen to me as I deliver it to you. Number one, I want to mention this morning, what causes people to fall out of church is what we call evil association. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 said, evil communication corrupt good manners. And nothing will mess you up any worse than getting hooked or up and getting hanging around people that just, that, uh, let's, just, let's just cut to the chase this morning. You just absolutely cannot hang around regularly some people and stay where you need to stay with God. You just can't do it. I can't, you can't, nobody you know can. And you're, I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how spiritual you are. Evil communications corrupt good manner. You don't, you don't make them pure, they make you unpure. That's what happened. Many did real good, but began hanging out with wicked people. Let me give you another verse of scripture. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, 
but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Let me give you one that ain't in the Bible. Birds of a feather flock together. All right, now watch this. Let me, let me illustrate this this morning. And come up here and help me just a minute. Can you do that? Uh, I want you to come up here. Anthony, he's a, he's a good-sized little youngin, and I want you to, you to uh, uh, stand up there in a chair, okay? All right. Maybe one on each chair. All right. All right. Uh, them things cost. Uh, and uh, Anthony, he's going to represent a saved Christian on, on his way to heaven. And, and trust me, Anytime I want to, I can take him out. Actually, I can outrun him. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, when we play basketball, man, he, he's pretty tough. Uh, and I ain't never played football with him. But anyway, uh, he's going to be a strong Christian. I am going to represent a wicked friend that he met at work. All right? And I'm going to say, uh, Anthony met this friend at work, and, and uh, you know, he's, he, he's sort of by himself. And, you know, you go through times that are lonely in your Christian life. You ain't, you ain't got a boyfriend. You ain't got a girlfriend. You ain't got nothing. Poor little you. Wah, wah, wah. You know. And, uh, and uh, you're pitiful and all that. And, you, and then you meet somebody, and they're friendly, and you get along with them good, you know, and everything. And, uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, hey, man. Uh, me, and, me and some boys going out tomorrow uh, Friday night, and then we're going we're going to Hickory and go to some nightclub. I guess there is a nightclub in Hickory. I don't know, uh, but we're going down there and we're going to party a little bit. You want to go with us? And he's going to say, obviously, no, no, I'm not going to do it. And he's going to say, Hey, Danny, why don't you come with me to church? Say, Danny, why don't you come with me to church? <laughs> well, you make it sound exciting. I can tell you that. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, but anyway, I'm just kidding. But anyway, he's going to try to get me to come to church. I'm going to try to get him to go party. Now watch this. How many of you believe that he's stronger than me? You're going to hurt my feelings if you say yeah. Well, obviously, obviously he is, obviously. Now watch this. Grab my hand. Now he's, going, he's trying to pull me into church. I'm trying to pull him out and sin. I'm trying to pull him down because I'm a wicked sinner. He's trying to pull me up because he's a good godly Christian. This is where some of y'all was at one time. There's people sitting right there, right there, right there, and right there. We're up. You was up. You was living right. And you met somebody at school or you met somebody at work and they said, we're going to go here Friday night, go to, go to the beach. Go on. You started hanging around. People that party, people that drink, people that nod your head. You know what I'm talking about? Now Watch. Even though he's stronger, even though he's, uh, I, got, I got something helping me. Now he's going to pull me up, I'm going to pull him down. Pull me up. I got him. See that? I pulled him down. He did not pull me up. And he's way bigger and stronger than me. Y'all picked me up there. I felt, thought my feet was going off the ground there one. <laughs> now listen, people. That's just how it is. A little old weak, centered girl at, at work can pull you down and get you out of church. Amen. It don't take much of a sinner to pull you. Why? Why'd that happen? Now, I'll tell you one thing. If I'd have been up here and he'd have been down there, no contest. There's no way I could pull him up. The, the world's helping me. Gravity, the world's got a pull on it. The world, the movies, the music, the world, it's got a pull to it. And it's helping me pull him down. It comes natural not to want to get, to get out of church and to not to serve God. Boys take off with some of their friends who don't go to church. Girls go out with the girls for a little while. Next thing you know, evil association will get you out of the will of God. Number two, I'm going to run through these quickly this morning. I want to say this. The second thing makes people drop out of church is a desire to be accepted by the world. You want to be liked. Everybody wants to be liked. You say, I will never get a boyfriend if I'm some prude 
Christian, dressing right, going to church every Sunday. Nobody will ever like me. I'll never be popular. And the answer to that is, if you have to be a sleaze to be popular, you done sold out and messed your life up anyway. People think, if I do this, they'll like me. Or if I do that, they'll like me. But your Bible said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And I know trips, sports, vacation, sports get more people out of church. I mean, they they play on a ball team, and every mama thinks her little boy is going to be the next Michael Jordan or the next, uh, you know, he's going to be Tim Tebow. Uh, I just got to take him to football. I just got to. Listen, there's nothing wrong with playing sports in the right place. Bodily exercise profiteth little. Sports are okay in the right place. But I'm telling you, you get into this travel ball and tee ball and this ball and that ball. Mark Moore, am I right? I mean, you, you know, I mean, good night, people. You can see it. Hey, forever, forever Tim Tebow, there's a thousand Lenny Bias who overdosed on drugs. And forever Tim Tebow, there's 50,000 kids that got out of church because mom and dad didn't think, listen, the devil don't care why you're out. He just wants you out. And if he can keep you out of church enough, he'll get your life and you'll be out before you know it. Amen? A desire to be accepted by the world. You say, well, I just want people to like me. I want people, okay, good, we all do. Uh, But I'm telling you, you better watch who you're following and you better watch who you get in a car with and you better watch whose house you go to and you better look out because it'll get you in big trouble. Over in Northern Europe, there's this uh, little animal called the lamb or leam or I don't know how to pronounce it and me and you would describe it as a field mouse. A little, a little rat. And uh, they, they have weird habits. They say them things will all get together and one of them will take off running and they'll all take off running and run right into the lake or into the ocean, the sea in northern Europe. And they say that's the weirdest thing. And they don't know why. I guess that's God's way of maybe feeding turtles or fish or some or sharks or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, when one of them takes off, they all take off running and go with that crowd and into that water. And I thought, Lord, that's just like teenagers. Teenagers look and say, everybody's going there, I'm going. Everybody's going to the concert, I'm going. Yeah, and you're going to go right off with the rest of them. You know, the smartest teenager in here this morning and the smartest old man in here this morning and the smartest old woman is saying, look, I'm not going with the world, I'm staying with God, I'm staying in church I'm going to see this thing out I'm going to write out, listen if we had everybody that had been to this church in the last 18 years you couldn't get them in this building today there's thousands of them but they, you know what they done they had a desire to be accepted by the world and they're out they're out today they're out today number three Number three, are you listening? Marriage out of the church. Thousands and thousands of stories. And nine times out of, the ten, out of ten, it's a Christian girl marrying an unsaved guy or a guy who won't come to church. Nine times out of ten. I, I could write you a book this thick right here and put names in it and tell you stories that sound just like this girl comes to church. She 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 gets under conviction. She gets in the altar. She gets right with the Lord. She has a smile on her face. She loves Jesus. She becomes a part of everything the church is doing, and it goes on. Uh, 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 or it don't have to be a young, a middle age, twenty five, thirty. Uh, maybe a divorced woman especially. If you're in a divorce situation this morning, you're in a very dangerous, dangerous, dangerous time in your life. And they'll come and, uh, you know, nobody likes to be by themselves. Nobody wants to feel rejected. Nobody likes to feel like, uh, you know, they don't have anybody to talk to or anything like that. And that girl does real good for a while or that lady does real good for a while and she got a smile on her face and she meets this guy at work or usually at work or maybe at at the, at the gym, or at the at the ball game, or at the mall, or anything. and they may, or, or maybe on Nosebook, and they start talking. You know, they can. They took one good picture in their life. It was twenty years ago, and that's what you're seeing. 
Uh, uh, when you see them in real life, it'd scare you. Uh, but anyway, uh, they put that picture on there. Look at me. Look at this. Uh, uh, and finally, uh, the first thing you know, they come. And they have this conversation. Hey, she says, uh, do you go to church? And he says, uh, uh, be honest with you, I ain't much on church. And she said, oh, you'd like my church. Uh, will you come to my church with me? Because you can hear me preaching in the back of her head. Brother Danny said, don't date a boy that won't go to church. Don't go date a boy that won't go to church. So she said, you'll come to church with me, won't you? You'll come to church with me, won't you? And he, he finally agrees. And Sunday morning, she here she comes. Not Sunday school. He won't do that. Hey, he feels uncomfortable coming to Sunday school. So they walk in back there uh, somewhere and they sit not in her normal seat, way back there somewhere, and as he's nervous, and she says, I hope everybody's nice to him. I hope everybody makes him feel welcome. I hope everybody, and uh, everybody looks at him like, we know what you're up to, you jerk. Uh, you know, uh, but they make themselves be nice because uh, that's what you're supposed to do. And uh, and and Mary shakes his hand, you know, and everything. And and then I get up and she said, "Oh, please, Lord, let Brother Danny be nice today. Please, don't, Lord, don't let him say nothing too bad. He'll run him off. Please, Lord, please." And I got to bang hit a couple of things like that. Bang hit another thing like that. You know, I just take my gun and go. And by the wherever it hits, it hits, you know. I mean, this, you get killed by friendly fire around here. And uh, I, I shoot on the, my gun like that. And, and uh, she goes, mm, a couple of times like, mm, a couple of times like. And she can't, even, she can't even enjoy the sermon because his leg touched hers and fire shot through her body. And, ah, you know, bunch of demonic bull like that right there. And, boy, I'm telling you, uh, you know, she's holding on. To, and when it's over, she said, did you like it? He said, yeah, actually, it's pretty good. I, I could stay awake at least. That's better than having much. Oh, it's meant to be. We're in love. When are we getting married? That's a girl with an extremely low IQ. Think and say something like that. The devil will send them, buddy. The devil will send them. And, and it works the other way around too. The devil sends some old floosy to you guys to mess you up. Floosy Lucy, that's what I call one not too long ago. I'm telling you, brother, he reluctantly sat in church a few times and then they're going to get married and in marriage counseling, I say, now listen, what are you, you going to do about church? They say, well, he likes our church. I say, is that, is that true? You like church? Yes. Uh, you going to come to church? Yeah, yeah. And I tell you what I've done. I've seen one come over in the old building and some of y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, this old boy come to church. This girl's going through a hard time uh, and, uh, and he, they fell in love. They want to get married and he, he said, we, we, didn't, we didn't do counseling. They actually come to my house, sat in my living room, and I said, look, we got everything settled. Y'all done talked about everything. They went on about a year like that. He got to church, and I'm telling you, the day they got married, that guy never stepped foot in church again. Never. Not one time did he come back to church. And I could tell by looking at him. You can't do this this long and not be able to read people's faces. I can look in here this morning and tell you who's here that don't really want to be here. I can look at you and tell. I, most of you want to be here, but there's a few of you, there's a couple of men in here, there's a couple of teenagers in here, you wouldn't be here. There's no way you'd be here, but your wife drug you in or your boyfriend made you come or your parents made you come. You're in bad shape, friend. You're in bad shape and marriage out of the church. Listen, he, and, and then finally, a month later, I call her and say, where have y'all been? What happened? She said, Brother Danny, he don't like our church. Why? Well, he says he, says he don't agree with that hard preaching and he, he don't like that shouting. And, us. and she said, I said, well, my goodness, can't you go somewhere? She said, he said he'd go with me if I'd go to his mom's little church right down the road here where they all grew up. And I say, okay, that's better than nothing, I'm sure. And go. And then six months later, I see her and say, y'all going to church? She says, no, they ain't going nowhere. You listening? They ain't going nowhere. Ever sorry person that pulls somebody out of church because they want to go to another church always winds up going to no church. Number four. Number four. You know what makes people drop out of church? 
Too much money. Too much money. I wish some of y'all, some people, would go broke so they'd come to church regularly. They never missed a service. I know people, when they had an old beat up car, they never missed a service. I'm telling you, they got their family out. They could barely pay their bills. I've had to give them guys money to get home on. And I'm telling you, brother, it's like a clock. They come in with the joy of the Lord on their face. They come in with the blessing of God on their life. They come in saying, hallelujah, it's good to be saved, brother Danny. Thank God. And then they prospered a little bit and got a good job. Then maybe got another better job. Got a nice car. Wasn't long after that, they got a boat, what long as that's they got a camper and you know when you have a ride a boat and go camping don't you, on the weekend when you ought to be in the house of God you ain't got no business gallivanting all over creation on God's day, on the Lord's day but get in the house of God and brother it ruined them, you want me to give you some scripture for that, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 and 10 everybody listen, it said they that will be rich that means you want money, I'm making a lot of money now, I can go on trips, I'm making a lot of money now. I can do this. Let me hear what the, what the Bible said. They fall into many temptations and a snare, foolish and hurtful lust, which drown men in perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after have erred from the faith. Pierced himself through with many sorrows. You know what that verse said? It said if you love money, it'll make you err from the faith. Very few people can make money and handle it and stay right with God. Amen? I'm telling you what, some of the worst thing that ever happened to some of y'all people was you made a lot of money. I'm not saying it's wrong and ain't wrong. I hope every one of you get rich if you can handle it and live right and serve God. But there ain't many that can. You know, back when I was growing up, we had an old song and I mean, before, uh, and every time I preach on money, I think about it. And I, I can only remember the guy's name, but he, 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 he sung a song. He said, uh, 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 he, he had his old guitar, and he said, people sure act funny when they get a little money. Yes, they do, y'all. Y'all remember that song? How many of you remember that old song? That's 100 years old. Hey, people sure act funny when they get a little money. Yes, they do, y'all. And he kept, he kept going on down through there, and he, he talked about knowing people when they didn't have nothing. And then he has a second verse said, people sure do squeal when they get a dollar bill. Yes, they do, y'all. People sure do squeal when they get a dollar bill. Yes, they do. Catch a little old tune, Lord. I'll be saying it for a week now. I, I mean, I, and I heard, I, and the next verse said, people sure do holler when they get a few dollars. Yes, they do, y'all. People sure can holler when they get a and brother Yate, he's exactly right he said I knew you when you was nothing one of the verses said I knew you when you lived in a hut made you living by the trees you cut and now you're living on easy street you pass me by and you won't even speak people sure act mean when they get a little green yes they do y'all people sure don't give a hoot when they get a little loot yes they do y'all I added them too amen People, people sure are rich when they get a little rich, and I'm nice about that one. <laughs> yes, they do, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! People sure act strange when they get a little change. Yes, they do, y'all. They do. Money will change you. It'll change you. Look at every movie star, every athlete, Anybody who gets it, change. nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong. Money can be a blessing if you'll use it and not let it use you. Very few people can do that. Number five, you know what makes people drop out of church? Don't get mad at me. It's the truth, though. Working on Sunday. Working on Sunday. Now, I explained to you many, many times how, how I feel about what the Bible teaches. That doesn't matter what we think. We understand that the Old Testament Jewish Sabbath is Saturday. You got that? The Old Testament Jewish Sabbath begins on Friday evening at 6 o'clock, goes to Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. So we don't go to church on, on Sunday because it's a Sabbath. Every once in a while you hear somebody in one of these churches get up and say, Lord, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. But it was yesterday. The Old Testament Jewish Sabbath is Saturday, the seventh day of the week. Look at your calendar. We go to church on Sunday, the first day of the week. The Holy Spirit came down, Pentecost, first day of the week. The resurrection of Christ, first day of the week. They met in, in Corinthians, first day of the week, in the book of Acts. They took up the collection, first day of the week, on the Lord's day. 
Therefore, we go to church on Sunday on the Lord's day. So the principle that is taught all the way through the Bible, Old and New Testament, that one day out of seven we give to the Lord to worship and honor Him. That being said, there are some people who have to, they have no choice, and they, and they can swap around. Policemen, nurses, uh, uh, the, uh, the people who uh, run businesses and things sometimes have to. And if you have to, you have to. And I would, the only way, I'm telling you, the only way I'd get a job that I had to work on Sunday is if I had to to feed my family. If I had to, I'd do it. And I'd work, I could do as much of church as I possibly can. You know why? The devil don't care why you're out, as long as you're out. You can't work all day on Sunday and say, well, the Lord understands because he knows I'm working. That ain't the point, man. Of course God understands. The point is, you need church. I need it, you need it, we all need it. I, I understand, nurses have to work. I, I don't want all the policemen to take Sundays off. It'd be scary around here. I don't want all the, if I had to go to the hospital, I'd want to, I'm not, I'm not a crazy person. I understand some of you have jobs where it's necessity. You have to. Uh, uh, but for heaven's sake, y'all, for heaven's sake, don't take a job that it, it can get you out of church if you're not real, real careful. How many young people? Get a job. Only place you can get a job, fast food place. You got school, you got work, and you can't, they make you work on Sunday, and then you, next thing you know, you're out of church. I preach a whole sermon on that. Give you stories after story of that. Number six, worldliness. Worldliness. The Bible said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Concerts, movies, sports, hiking, picnics, shopping, trips, vacation. Next thing you know, you're so full of the devil's candy, you have no appetite for the holy things of God. If you listen to the devil's music, watch all the devil's movies, hear, go all the devil's places, see all everything Hollywood puts out, you, have no, you will not read that book. You will not do it. And the reason some of you won't read your Bible right now, as soon as you walk out that door, you eat the candy on social media. Everything, it's YouTube and this and that. I, and I'm not saying it's all sinful, it's not. But I'm telling you one thing, you better get your habit back of getting that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. I'm telling you this morning, I know it's a pretty day. We could all went on a picnic, but go on a picnic this evening. Go on a picnic Saturday afternoon. Go on a picnic. Listen, we left here last Sunday night took our friends from Florida and some other folks. We went over there and got an ice cream. Went and seen the waterfalls after church. Stays daylight till 9 o'clock, y'all. People sure act funny when they get a little gas money. Yes, they do, y'all. The movies. Somebody, I've, something popped up on my phone about a movie that's just come out in the last few weeks, that Purge movie. Don't look down. Look up here at me. You wasted your, you waste God's money and your money on trash like that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I said you ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's a trilogy, a series of movies where they, some demon doctrine come up and they said everything's legal for 24 hours. There's no crime. You can kill people, steal money, whatever you want to do. It's very popular right now. See, they know how to push it to get the sucker's money, yours. They ain't getting mine. They ain't getting mine. And you know what they said? They said the point of that movie is to make people think if we could take one day a year and get out all our frustration and get it over with, commit all the crime we're going to commit, then the next day everybody will be fine. Answer to the world's problems. Well, that's an ignorant person that thought that up. Listen, you let them do it one day, buddy. Bless God, they're going to want to do it tomorrow too. Amen. You say, wouldn't it be fun? It probably would if you're on the giving end, if you got the gun instead of the one getting killed. But that's wicked. That's a wicked movie. You hear me? 
That's, listen, it's worldly. It's worldly. God ain't in a million miles of that. I'm not trying, I don't know who, who's seen it and who ain't, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You know you shouldn't. You know. You say, I just want to see what it is. It's not that bad. You're comparing it to porn. People show sure act funny when they get a little movie ticket. Ariana Grande has the song of the summer. It's called God is a Woman. God is a Woman. And it's blasphemy. It's blasphemy because she makes, she making love with this man and said, man, by the time you be with me, you'll know God is a woman. I'm God. That wicked little thing, she ought to be ashamed of herself. God gave her a little warning over in that concert over yonder in Europe uh, here a while back. She didn't listen. I'm telling you, brother, God ain't no woman and God ain't in a million miles of Ariana Grande singing. I'm telling you, he's God Almighty. He's God Almighty. I'm telling you, this Sarah Silverman, that wicked thing, I mean, they blaspheme God. They make fun of, uh, they, make, they, they, got, they got picture, they got shirts now with Donald Hunt. Trump hanging by a noose, and they're saying, they're saying, uh, 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 look at hanging with Trump, hanging with Trump. That ain't a bit funny, and I'm not supporting Donald Trump. I'm not. He's a nut. He ain't a bigger nut as she is, but he's a nut. And I appreciate what he does right, and disagree with what he does wrong. What would happen if you made a shirt and had Barack Obama hanging there and said hanging with Trump? You know what you'd have? A war. You know why? Bunch of hypocrites in Hollywood. Boy, I've killed this service. You say, I ain't coming back. I know, that's why I'm going to get you while you're here. Well, I got my chains. Number seven, and I'm done. Here's another reason people drop out of church. Pharisaical attitude of Christians. How many people? How many times have I heard this? Preacher, I was out six weeks. And not one person from the church call me or come to see me. How many times have I heard this? Preacher, daddy died. Grandma died. And not one person from my church called me, came to see me, and the, the wicked people at work took up money and bought, bought us, brought us food. I'm going to tell you something, people. It ain't just all about you, and it ain't all about me. We got people in here that are hurting. It's our job to be a friend and be good to them. Somebody that needs help, help them. Somebody, I mentioned Rachel moving here. I mentioned people once in a while. I don't want to embarrass nobody, but there's people in here that need help. There's people in here that need help. And sometimes people get knocked out and drop out of church because they feel like nobody in the church cares about me. I talked to a young lady the other night. I was witness to her. And I said, you ought to come to church. And she was, she had some crazy looking hair. And she said, I went to one church and the preacher told me not to come back because of my hair. I said, you're kidding me. She said, no. She said, he didn't like the way I was dressed and my hair. Now look, I think you ought to have a, a godly haircut and I think you ought to dress right. But you have no right to look down on somebody who comes in not dressed right. Or you have, well, I have no right to act like that. That's a pharisaical. Listen, if it wasn't for the grace of God, me and you would be in a crack house this morning. Me and you would be in jail or in hell or already on our way. Let's don't let the devil use our attitude to knock somebody else out of church. Well, maybe you're sitting here this morning and you say, you know what, preacher? You nailed it. You nailed it. You said exactly what happened in my life that got me out. I'd like for the, uh, but Jason, why don't y'all come and get us another song this morning? And they're gonna sing, and this is gonna be my invitation. For everybody that's here, it'd be a good time to start all over. Start all over. Make a fresh start. Because you can see, I see a pattern I could put my hands on two or three in here this morning that's on your way out. Oh, not me, preacher. You don't understand. Mama was sick. This happened. That happened. Yeah, I know. And the next Sunday will be something else. And the next Sunday will be something else. 
Next one will be something else. I always taught my, my kids, I say, look, if a kid's sick, the whole family don't stay out of church. One stay home with a kid, doesn't come, swap it Sunday night, the other come, because you need it. You need it. You need it. Why people drop out of church? I don't want to drop out. You don't have to go to church to go to heaven, but there ain't nothing wrong going first class, are there? If you're able, you ought to go to church. Let's stand. Let's stand. How many of you come this morning, meet me here at this altar, and say, I'm going to start out, I'm going to start out all over again, preacher. Maybe I can feel myself slipping a little bit, and I just want to get down on my knees. Let God help you this morning. Lord, please speak to us today. Amen. Amen. Many times in life, the burdens get me down. Amen. Amen. Come on, that's right. Come on. And it Amen. seems that Amen. a friend Come on. cannot be found. Come on, come on, right now. Come on, right now. Let's go. Amen. Valley all alone. I can count on you, Lord, for strength. Hey, to go on. Hallelujah. Come on, let's make a fresh start. And I've come, come just as far as I can go. go. Yeah, I count on you, I Lord. Can count on you, Lord, to carry hey, my hey, love. Hey, I'm going to get in here. I'm not going to drop out. I'm going to drop out. I'm going to get in here. How God took us from the mire to the choir. It'll be a lot different than this morning. You've endured this morning, and you'll enjoy tonight. Amen. It's sad to say Christians are so messed up now. I mean, you just start talking about sin, they have a heart attack. But, um, you know, sin is still sin, right? Amen. Amen. God's going to bless our church if we'll do right and serve him. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, well, there's a church down here. Don't do that, Brother Danny. I know, there's thousands of them. But right, still right, and God's still on his throne. All right, now we're going we're gonna to let you go now. Thank you for being here.